Welcome to this tutorial on structural analysis in GHS. Tutorial number 720 focuses on advanced longitudinal strength. So we've mentioned in the last tutorial that there are several different options for longitudinal strength calculation and today we're going to cover more of those options. So we're going to talk about longitudinal strength limits, we're going to talk about how to supply section properties for your hull structure items like section modulus and moment of inertia and then we're also going to show how you can generate hull stress output and deflection output but quick disclaimer uh, this is presentation for instruction purposes only I am not or excuse me this presentation is for instruction purposes only it is not to be used in engineering for construction and I am not a representative of creative systems this is all unofficial training based upon my own personal knowledge and experiences. For the official training, you can contact Creative Systems at the information on the bottom of your screen. I do recommend the official training, it's very informative. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about today is longitudinal strength limits. Now, in normal longitudinal, longitudinal strength calculations, GHS tells you your bending moment and your shear force. But the really interesting question that comes out of that is, is this a good thing or a bad thing? You know, are my bending moment and shear force values too big or okay? And the answer is that that usually depends on where you are on the vessel. Uh, it depends on what your regulation state your limits are for your vessel. And so the uh, limit itself is a separate thing that gets calculated. And you can actually enter that limit into GHS so that you can actually see it on the same curve as your uh, longitudinal strength curve and you can actually see okay there's the curve for my limit and you can see the curve for your moments and your shear stress and see that you're underneath them so that's what the LS limits are is we're providing that information for GHS to draw that curve and you can actually define limits for three separate things uh, shear, bending moment, and torque I'm just going to focus on shear and bending moment. Uh, the torque, if you want to learn about torque, you can look it up in the GHS command dictionary. Now for each of these limits, it can either be a single value or a curve. And because I also said that these limits are usually based upon regulations, uh, you can also specify a title to uh, provide some background information on where the limits came from. So that's the first thing I'll show you how to do, is how to specify a title for your LS limits. Um, and like I said, that usually is describing which regulation it was that created those limits. So the way you do that is the command LS limit title, and then whatever your title is. So LS limit is the, uh, the root command for all of these, and the first thing we specify is the title, and then you actually type in the text of what your title is. Uh, don't bother including any quotation marks. So as you can see here, LS limit title, then I've just typed ABS regulations. No quotation marks needed. Okay, now let's get into the really interesting part of LS limits, which is how to actually specify the limits themselves. So the first things we're going to talk about are shear limits. Uh, the GHS command, if you want to do it as a single value, you would do LS limit SHR equals and then whatever your shear limit is. Now here's an important thing. Your regulations are usually going to specify your shear limit as a force. GHS doesn't think in forces, it only thinks in weights. So you have to divide by gravity to convert that shear limit into uh, your current weight units for GHS. So here's an example of applying a single shear limit. We just type LS limit shear equals 2500 and that's just going to produce a nice flat curve along the graph that you can see that you're under but quite often with regulations this limit actually varies based upon your location on the vessel so you can define that curve itself uh, the way you do that is the LS limit shear just like before SHR equals but instead of giving it a single value we give it pairs of V1 at L1, V2 at all the way up to however many pairs you need. And what that is is that's the uh, shear limit at a current location, comma, another shear limit at another location, all the way up to whatever, um, however many points you need. And you can see an example at the bottom. 
So uh, you can see that you know we're separating each one with the at symbol. And remember, all of those are in your current weight units. Now, another thing, um, shear can be positive or negative, and sometimes in the regulations, the limit changes depending on whether it's positive shear or negative shear. So uh, GHS actually lets you specify two different values, one for negative shear and one for positive shear. And the way you separate those two is with the end symbol. Uh, so if you're using an American keyboard, this is over the 7 key. Uh, so you do the Q1 and V1. So Q1 is the limit for negative shear. V1 is the limit for positive shear. And you actually type this in as a negative value and a pos the positive value for the limit at the location. So you're providing two shear limits at each location. Okay, now you can do the same thing for bending moment. Uh, the only difference is, you'll notice here, uh, we've done ls limit moment equals. So MMT is for bending moment equals. And if you give it a single value, uh, that's the a single moment curve. So that's going to be just one flat line across the entire length of your vessel. And the uh, moment, again, these are usually in um, moments, which are force times distance is how the regulations will usually specify it. In GHS, you have to divide by gravity to get weight times distance. So weight units times length units, whatever the current units are in GHS. So as an example, uh, you type LS limit moment equals 2500. And that creates a single bending moment limit. Now you can also define a curve, again, using uh, coordinate pairs of moment limit at location, moment limit at location. And just like with shear, you can do negative moments and positive moment limits. So again, you can do uh, negative and positive at each location. OK, going beyond limits now. Uh, you've defined your limits. You, that's great. Uh, sometimes you actually want to directly check the stress in your hull. Uh, to do that, you're going to need to define your hull section modulus. Now, GHS does not calculate section modulus for you. Uh, that's a whole separate set of structural calculations. But once you've done those calculations, you can, again, enter that information into GHS. Now, one thing you have to know is that hull section modulus is associated with a specific heel angle. Okay, so you want to make sure you, that you set your heel to zero degrees before you define your section modulus. The next thing you need to know is that the section modulus uses some a bit of odd units. Um, it's in inches squared feet if you're using imperial units or it's in centimeters squared meters if you're in metric units. So make sure you convert your numbers to the right unit systems. Okay, now how do we actually enter this into GHS? It's the smod command. And just like with all the other things, you can define a single value, or you can define a range of values that vary along the hull. And again, if you want to define a single value, it's S mod equals that value. Remember your units. Or if you want to define a curve, it's S mod equals section modulus at location, section modulus at location, on and on to however many points you need. Um, I think that's the major parts there. OK. Now. This is kind of the neat part about section modulus. Remember, why were we defining the section modulus? Because we wanted to get our hull stresses, the actual uh, stresses in the steel of our hull. So that's what we do, is you start by defining your section modulus. So that's the smod command. Uh, then you set up your load case. Remember to think about distributed weights. You run your ls command. And this is the neat part. You don't have to modify it at all. Um, the ls command automatically knows if you have defined a section modulus. And if you have done that, it will automatically write out the hull stresses. 
So the GHS command for that is just ls or ls slash frame if you want information at frame locations. Now notice if you want the information at the frame locations, remember you need to have defined the frame file beforehand. Okay, well the section modulus is not the only piece of information that you can enter for GHS. Uh, you can also do the Hall moment of inertia. And you're going to do this by actually specifying two separate properties. You're going to enter the moment of inertia and the distance to the extreme fiber. And again, just like section modulus, this is associated with a specific heel angle. Set, so set heel equal to zero before you define this. Um, now, what is GHS going to use this for? Well, if you define the moment of inertia and the distance to extreme fiber, GHS can automatically calculate the section modulus, which means now GHS can give you two useful things. It can give you the stress output, and it also can give you the deflection of the hull. So that's pretty useful. But, just like with section modulus, this uses some fairly weird units. Uh, so you have to be really careful about your units. Your mom moment of inertia has to be defined in inches squared, feet squared, if you're using imperial units, or it has to be in centimeters squared, meters squared, if you're using metric units. And your distance to extreme fiber has to be in feet or meters. So again, remember, double check your units, make sure they're in what GHS expects. How to actually define the, uh, sec the moment of inertia? Well, you're still using the smod command, but this time instead of entering just a single number, you're going to separate them with a slash. So it's uh, i at slash c1 at your location i slash c at your location and what that is is the i values those are your moment of inertia remember your units uh, and the slash and then the c values are the distance to extreme fiber and then it's always given at a longitudinal location or you can define a single property for the entire hull so you can see a couple examples below uh, notice the you know the two numbers are separated with that forward slash and then we separate each pair with a comma. Okay, now let's say you've entered all that SMOD information. Uh, how do you actually use it to get the hull deflection output? Well, this is pretty ne neat because again, GHS will automatically calculate hull deflection if you provide that information to it. So the way you do it uh, is you enter the moment of inertia information, just like we showed, then you set up your load case, and you run the longitudinal strength command. It will automatically calculate the stresses and it will automatically calculate the deflection. So that's all there is. There's no extra special thing that you need to specify. Okay, time to practice these skills. Homework number 721. I'd like you to use the solution from homework 711 as a basis. Uh, that's already set up in the file for 721. And what I'd like you to do with this is uh, some fancy longitudinal strength. I'd like you to enter some LS limits for shear and moment, uh, just a single value set, and rerun longitudinal strength checking against those shear and moment limits. Now, you might be under the limit, you might be over it, doesn't matter. Mostly just check to see that in your report output, that you have a graph that shows both the limit and the moment in shear. Now, the, the limits are shown in this table below. For extra credit, if you feel like being challenging, enter different limits for positive and negative values of shear and bending moment. Uh, you'll have to make up your own uh, limits for negative values, but you know something reasonably close to the values you see here, that works fine. And now the job is not done yet. So you've done all of that. Now let's talk about stresses and deflections. Now define some section modulus information in your hull. And use the table below to define the section modulus. Check your hull stresses. 
and then I would like you to turn around and redefine your section modulus as the moment of inertia and the extreme fiber distance. And then once again, run your longitudinal strength. Uh, in that case, check your hull deflection. And also, it should report hull stresses as well. Compare that to the value you got before. They should be the same values for hull stresses. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this informative and useful. You can find the homework files and other tutorials like this on dmsonline.us. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Hey, did you know that there is a magic button down below? Click the like button or even the subscribe button and I will make more videos for you.